Sup, 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 guys. We're here for the Yu-Gi-Oh! Council. Welcome to Coffee Time, your Monday morning discussion video released in the evening. Because I have no time in the day to really release stuff. So, to be... Well, actually, I just kind of contradicted myself because there are times I do. So, there's going to be an update after the discussion because that's the new way we do Coffee Time. So, we're going to be talking about the Megatons. I promise this the week before last. But because, you know, whatever the hell it was we were going over last week that took more precedence... That happened. But I figured that talking about the Megatons is perfect time now, considering that most of you will have it Friday and we will have it Wednesday, so you guys can actually see if it's actually worth it for you or if you really, you know, like rarities, how everything looks, you know, just get an idea of it. I'm not trying to say, here, check out this video because we have it and you don't. No, that's not what I'm trying to do. Um, so we're going to go over everything in the Megatons, all the good cards, all the highlights, what I think about it, everything. I do this every year for the Megatons, and this year is no different, but honestly, straight out, because I actually written down everything instead of just looking it up on my phone, I really do think this is probably the most well put together Megaton series to date, out of all three of them that they have been, 2014, 2015, now 2016. So... Megatins 2016 will cover Cross Souls, Breakers of Shadow, Dimensions of Chaos, and Clash of Rebellion. So what can you really pull out that is significant? Stay with me here because I'm not just going to count the cards that only come from those sets. I'm going to count the cards you are guaranteed to get to some degree because the deities I don't know fully too much about because we don't have everything for them quite just yet so that's also a reason that they're probably going to be left out so sorry if i offend anyone for leaving that out so there's the magi specter raccoon this is a crucial card because of the new limitation of crin this will search out that crin for you so if you're a magician player and you have not picked up raccoons this is your opportunity to hopefully pull one out there's also cyber dragon infinity this has been a card that has been sought out after and has seen a little bit of a price increase over the past week or so so this is more than welcome opportunity to get more copies into the secondary market that's really needed scarlight red dragon archfiend great level 8 synchro cannot talk highly enough about him i wish that cypher and lord omega was in the set with him unfortunately cypher and lord omega is not and we'll have to wait to probably gold series to get that in about another six months unfortunately but scarlet red dragon r is getting his reprint here for the first time and he's an amazing level eight synchro then we have clear wing not crystal wing we have clear wing the level seven version which is still a great synchro nonetheless may not be seeing as much play as his you know more advanced version of Crystal Wing, but hell, Clear Wing is still amazing. You're guaranteed if you pick up the Kyber Tin or the Obelisk Tin, however you want to phrase it, I don't have the pictures in front of me, then you're guaranteed to get a Blue Eye Spirit Dragon. This is the Synchro um, from obviously the set with all the Blue Eye stuff, but instead of getting it Secret Rare, he's going to come Ultra Rare. We'll have 100% confirmation on Wednesday, but right now we have pretty much a 99.9 .9 confirmation that that is a thing because i like to make the joke i went to the future and you know came back but that's not true at all what it actually is is basically the information has been public knowledge for months now and konami has even said it uh ghost ogre snow rabbit you have a chance of pulling it secret and if you buy the obelisk tin with the you know the blue eyed spirit dragon in and whatnot the obelisk and the original blue eyes art we're going to talk about the original blue eyes art in a moment uh then you get ghost ogre ghost ogre is an amazing card i cannot talk highly enough um i think it it's gonna see less play this format but that's okay because it does what it does right and it doesn't need to do anything else it's pretty much like that kind of that kind of situation where I need this to do this one thing. I need effectively or negate another thing. So, you know, different functionalities, but both amazing cards. But Ghost Ogre is finally going to see its reprint. Blue Eyes, White Dragon, original art. Again, 99.9% .9 sure that we're finally getting a reprint of the original art of not just Blue Eyes, but if you pick up the Slifer Tin, then you're going to get that original Dark Magician, which is a lot cheaper than the Blue Eyes for some reason, but... Hey, original Blue Eyes art and original Dark Magician. I may be a nostalgia freaking nut job over this kind of stuff, but gimme, give gimme, give gimme, give gimme, 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 gimme. I just, I can't wait to have like more updated, you know, version of the original Blue Eyes. I want to say it's Ultra. 
maybe secret but I, I or maybe even super i'm not sure the rarity so i'm not going to fully comment on the rarity it should be ultra because we had the super version of the uh original blue eyes art from the kaiba pack so i mean hopefully it'll be ultra because that would be a nice calling card back is it's a 20 year anniversary of Yu Gi Oh and whatnot but again i don't have it in front of me on my notes so it's kind of a thing moving onward odd eyes vortex dragon odd eyes fusion will both finally see a reaper in here uh, both cards are around like 20 to 30. I think Fusion is like 25 to 30 and then Vortex Dragon is about 20 bucks. So both great reprints to help them become a little bit cheaper for, you know, the player base who is a little more budget friendly kind of thing to get their hands on. Painful Decision, amazing card, cannot talk highly enough about it. Probably going to see way more Painful Decision uh, plays throughout the next couple of months than we have so definitely good time for a reprint for it. I, I always forget to talk about this on stock market. So someone please go to the last stock market video and just type go over painful decision because I always forget. I always feel so stupid after editing it. I'm like, God damn it, I missed it again. Uh, Kaiju Sea Turtle is going to get a reprint here. One of the best side deck cards we've had in a long time. And I, I welcome this reprint with open arms. Like, come on. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, Twin Twisters, probably the best super rare you could pull. I know it's only like $10, but utility-wise, you can never have enough Twin Twisters. You never know when you're going to build another deck and you want to put Twin Twisters in. It's just good to have. It's good trade bait. Everyone's always looking for more Twin Twisters if they're building more stuff. Quickie Mirror Force reprint. Um, Quaking's been going from $5 to $10 over the past couple of weeks, so I'm glad to see this reprint for the people who did not pick up Quaking Mirror Force before it kind of just like doubled in price. I know it's not a super duper, you know, price increase, but still, like me, I wouldn't play regular Mirror Force right now. Quaking, Drowning, those are the best two. We're seeing Quaking get reprinted here, so if you have not picked up Quaking Mirror Force, that's one ultra rare you want to hope to pull out. But there are so many good cards, and we're not even done yet. Trap Tricks, the Exceed, Raflica. It's, I, I again, with Floodgate Trap Hole now being released, she's that much better. She's a go-to utility rank four. If you watch the, again, I'm not trying to plug my own shit here. If you watch the Light Swarm duels I did, because the deck profile is going up tomorrow. If you watch that you'll in your deck or whatnot, you get what I mean. But it pops two on the board. She makes so much use of it. She always makes it live. And you can use Bottomless. You can use Floodgate Travels with her. She's just amazing. Cannot talk highly enough. Um, this next one, I'm so happy it's finally getting reprinted. This thing has been so overpriced because it's just hard to get. But I'm sorry to say this if I offend anyone who's playing Red Eyes. The deck's not worth the price tag. Blackstone of Legend is like the most overdue. I wish Konami would have put in fucking Gold Series this year. Uh, reprint that it has been needed for a while. So I'm definitely glad it's coming now. Brilliant Fusion, another good card. Even if it's just a super rare or whatnot, it's good to pull out. Um, the Treasure of the Ying Zing, it's like $10 right now. So just good to get more copies out there. Galaxy Cyclone, not too many decks for utilizing it. But it is still a good card, so that's why we're putting it on here. Jar of Avarice, also one that's not seen tons of play, but still worth the mention. Then we have Lose One Turn. I mean, it's it's not like the oh my god be all end reprint, but it's still a good card to pull nonetheless. Melody of Awakening Dragon, all the new Blue Eyes players will have another opportunity to get this card if they can get it out of the recent, I want to say tournament pack, I, I think it's official store, OTS pack, whatever whatever Konami calls it because I always get confused by the tournament pack names, but um, if you didn't get it there and you want the original rarity, you can get, like I think it's super rare, you can get super rare in the tin, so that's good to pull. Galaxy Eyes Full Armor Photon Dragon, also great for Blue Eyes. Good time for that reprint. And Solemn Strike is probably the biggest one out of the entire tin. Because Solemn Strike is sitting at like 35. And I think the problem is when people hear all these reprints, it sounds great and whatnot. But when you realize that there's four sets that are combined to make the Mega Tin packs, and you're only getting one secret, one ultra, one super. And like one rare in those tins, the rares are really not going to change anything. I think the most sought out after rare out of those mega tins is probably going to be, um, if we're actually talking legit here, is going to be the sea turtle, and that's pretty much it. But 
I'm not trying to put it down. I'm not trying to like say the tins are bad. The tins are pretty much fun to open. They're great for any Yugi tuber to open because you never know what the fuck you're going to get. And it's fun. And there's nothing wrong with it being fun for 20 bucks. Um, the thing is, don't go... What I'm trying to say is, don't go in going, Hey, I'm going to buy a whole case of this and try to make my money back. Because that's a bad investment. I'm trying to be very frank and not being so offensive about it. But it's it's a bad investment. Honestly, save some more money. Put money into a case for Invasion of Venom. That's where the real sweet, sweet spot would be. Because there's so much stuff already in Invasion of Venom that we know we're getting. And plus you have the 10 imports. We don't know what we're getting out of those 10 imports. It could be amazing stuff. And then when there's 10 TCG exclusives, that could be amazing for Spyro that break the deck. And obviously, this is not a money set. This is a reprint set. This is the set that if you missed out the first time, or you just need more of something, or you just want to go back and now you want to build it. I mean, come on. The original Blue Eyes, the Blue Eyes Spirit Dragon, the Galaxy Eyes Full Armor, and the Melody. That's four cards for Blue Eyes right there. The Black Zone of Legend. That thing has been overpriced. But a lot of what I mentioned has been like $10. Some of it $20. Some of it, some of it more. I like to try to just get across the board. There are some amazing reprints. I'm not calling the tins bad. Don't worry. I'm buying two of them because I want them. I want to open them. I'm just giving my thoughts. Do I think it's worth it to open it? Yeah, of course. But if you're going in trying to make your money back, don't. <laughs> That's not really a good thing to try to do. You know, you got to go in just, if you're going to buy them, you're going to buy them for fun or you just want to try your luck, you know, play the lotto, go for it. Uh, if you're going to try to sit here and make a business off these Megatons time and time again the past two years, and I'm even telling you now, it's not going to happen. So don't don't try doing that. I, I don't want to see someone go, man, I bought like Megatons and I got fucked out of my money because I want to use my money for something else. Just telling you how it is. But I just want to say thank you guys so much for tuning in every single week. It means the world. The Megatons are a fun time to open. I cannot wait to open them on Wednesday. And here we go with the update. So Wednesday, Megatins. So Wednesday is a pretty crazy day, but I'm still going to try to get something else out on the other channels. I'm always promoting those other channels because, you know, you guys are like, hey, I wish you would do Let's Plays. You have a good commentary voice. I already do on Rewathlon Gaming. I wish you would talk about WWE or make a WWE channel. That would be dope. Because I make all the WWE jokes. Well, it's on the Counts Network. We always talk about Raw and SmackDown now the past couple of weeks. So go over there you don't have to subscribe but you know it just keeps you in in the loop of things and then there's uh the pokemon council which we're going to be pushing a lot a lot further to the moon than we ever have honestly i've been working harder trying to make better content here uh focusing more on the quality of the videos and what i'm talking about and just overall not trying to ramble as much as i usually did and I'm listening to more feedback and being more open about it, even if it sounds negative. I try to give it a try and listen to everyone what you have to say. But that's going to be it for tonight. I just want to say thank you guys for tuning in. If you're looking for the post-Raw video on the network, that goes up tomorrow morning. But I just want to say thank you guys for watching. This is the final video for the night for pretty much all the channels. That's usually how it is. Let's save the best for last. I love you guys. And if you're new here and that did not sound gay as fuck, then make sure to subscribe for more as I'll see you tomorrow for the Light Sworn Deck Profile and Tech Motherfucking Tuesday. See you guys then. Have a good one. Peace.